You are with the big story here. I'm Seher Zama. Our focus today is heavy rains that are threatening a, a situation of floods in Karnataka once again. Heavy rains here, these are across five districts of North Karnataka that have thrown life out of gear. Several rivers are bursting from their sea, overflowing that has led to flooding in various districts. The latest incident that came in from Belgavi, where passengers on board a tourist bus, having had a miraculous escape, as their road caved in, leaving behind a four feet hole. In fact, in visuals here that you see on your screens, this is uh, on the left of your screens of that accident here, a major part of that bus having slipped into the hole. Local residents allege that the road in question was uh, never constructed properly. In other areas, in Chikkodi, several cars and bikes uh, washed away in flood waters. In Dharwad, motorists were stuck because of waterlogging. In Gadag, over 36 passengers travelling in a private bus were stuck in the middle of a bridge after the bus broke down because of inundated water. The passengers were rescued well in time. I'm going to throw this open to our panelists here in just a bit, but first getting in more inputs from our correspondent Neha with those details here. Neha, these are unprecedented rains that the state of Karnataka is seeing. Uh, as far as the month of October is concerned, 60% more than expected. Uh, how is the administration coping? Well, Sahar, you know, uh, really a valid point right here, uh, ra raised by you over here. How is the administration coping? First of all, you know, we have to define administration in the state of Karnataka. That definition itself is rather hazy at this point in time. You have the BJP over here, you know, claiming that they are trying their level best, you know, that they are trying and uh, dispersing as much uh, flood relief as they can. But on the other hand, you also have criticism and flack that's coming in from the citizens, from the residents of these districts, especially the villagers and the farmers. Now, as far as the administration coping is concerned, we've brought you devastating visuals from as many as six to seven districts of Karnataka. And Sahar, this comes just with two to three days of rain. And if the government of Karnataka is incapable of handling a situation like this, it really makes one wonder what they're doing. Now, do remember that mm -hmm. you know this comes close on the heels of uh, just a month of heavy rains that, uh, you know, the, uh, that, that the state is just reeling yes. under. We're barely even recovering from from those floods that we're already expecting another flood-like situation. Flash floods is what, uh, you know, the Met Department and the Disaster Management has already declared this as. Right. Uh, uh, last time around, of course, which was close to a month ago, uh, the state government was uh, chief minister accused of not having his cabinet in place. There were no enough uh, hands on board, not enough help from ministers in handling the particular department required here for, for conducting the relief rescue operations. Uh, now, are, are, we, are we looking at uh, uh, more timely intervention by the government? This would, of course, mean uh, you can't control these unprecedented rains, but this would mean timely evacuation, uh, community kitchens being set up, more relief work being done. Do you see that happening? Well, Sahar, you know, like you rightly said, the last time around, the BJP had the fact that, you know, the cabinet ministers were just inducted, that the government was just formed, that they were incapable of handling a situation like that. But this time around, they should have been prepared for a situation like this. Warnings were, in fact, already raised. You had red flags that were raised. You did know that, you know, uh, the, there was going to be uh, heavy rains over the uh, over the next uh, two, three days. And even now, as we speak, Sahar, the Met Department has forecasted heavy rains for this entire week that we're talking about. So is the government really doing enough? You, now this comes at a time, do remember, when you have the Chief Minister and the Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka touring around Maharashtra as well, trying and campaigning for the contestants, for the candidates, beg your pardon, over there. Now, while of course that seems to be the prime focus of the government, it is the people of the state who are really suffering. It is of course going to take some time for the government to really take stock of the situation and understand what's really happened on ground over here. Now, as far as, you know, many of these districts are concerned, Sahir, do remember that, you know, uh, they are coming up for by-elections and the people of the state are angry. So this could, of course, you know, maybe not really work in the favor of the BJP at this point in time and at least that should be reason enough for you know the chief minister the deputy chief minister and the other ministers to really come down and take stock of the situation okay 
Right. Uh, Neha, what we're looking at uh, right now is uh, several of those affected districts under uh, an, an orange alert, which means uh, heavy rainfall, which is to continue in these areas here. Let's also look at the capital uh, city, Bengaluru, here on how things are faring there. Uh, if, if we compare this... Uh, just for the sake of a comparison here to the scenario that we'd seen in capital city Patna, where the case was that rainfall wasn't as unprecedented as unpreparedness were. Uh, roads were not being pumped out in time. Roads were not being prepared for the onslaught of monsoons. In Bengaluru, how are things faring today here in Karnataka? Well, Sahir, you know, you go out to the streets of Bengaluru, the so-called IT capital of the state of the country, and you ask any resident about their satisfaction with the level of, uh, you know, the amenities provided to them compared to the taxes that they pay, and the only answer that you would get is a disappointment, to say the least. Now, do remember that we're talking about most roads in the city that are filled with potholes. We're talking about improper sewage systems, no uh, lack of, uh, you know, uh, the stormwater drains as well to be able to handle the capacity capacity of water and do remember that you know it was just about uh, two days ago on the weekend that we saw as many as thousand citizens thousand residents coming out in the IT hub of the city the Mahadevpura Whitefield areas protesting demanding that they be given the facilities that they are paying for now be it the roads here be it the sewage systems be it for that matter the pollution levels rising pollution levels mm -hmm. also it really seems like the government of Karnataka and the BBMP have collectively failed the citizens to say the least All right, uh, let's, uh, let's directly ask this to this point that you've raised here, uh, that uh, e even if it goes with the understanding that these are unprecedented rains, uh, there has been work that has not been done on ground and questions would be asked to the government, to the BBMP. Let's have Mr. Vivek Reddy, spokesperson of the BJP, respond here to this. Mr. Reddy, uh, w what's the reason here being given out by the state government? Well, I think uh, these are unprecedented times, uh, Faye, as you say. And uh, nevertheless, the state government has uh, geared up. It has asked all the deputy commissioners to get into swing into action so that uh, the harm that has been created due to this uh, rain uh, is uh, prevented, is mitigated. As of now, uh, the chief minister is monitoring the situation. The ministers, uh, administrative ministers of the respective districts are monitoring the situation. I think uh, as the day goes, we will we have the exact uh, statistics as to the measures that have been taken and the outcome. And uh, as, as has been believed, this rain is going to go on for about four days. The satellite images show huge, uh, dense, okay. dense, dense mass of clouds that have accumulated. So the state uh, is all geared up to face this crisis. Yes, uh, Mr. Vivek Reddy, could, could we get some specifics here on this? Because Karnataka state having suffered through the floods just... Uh, last month on one corrective what exactly are the corrective measures that were taken on ground which which should have helped to an extent to the cities and the districts to have managed through these rains mr vivek reddy that question for you please yes Yes. Okay, we're going to have to reconnect with you on that in just a bit. Let's also get in Mr. Brijesh Kalappa, a spokesperson of uh, the Congress with us. Uh, thank you for being with us, uh, Mr. Kalappa. Uh, would you agree that this is, this is perhaps a time that one needs to stand with the state government because uh, uh, these are unprecedented rains in the month of October that we've ever seen in Karnataka? No, I agree that there are unprecedented rains, but uh, the state government has had enough and more time to actually get into the act and uh, to uh, to uh, take uh, relief measures. But uh, obviously, they have not done it. The fact is that uh, when the when uh, Mr. Yadurappa assumed office as chief minister, for over a month he had absolutely no ministers, right? And he was functioning all alone. Now the cabinet has been half full. Mm. It is not there. The entire cabinet has not been filled. So there's only like 14 or 15 ministers, and they are now taking care of this. And also the fact that the central government has uh, turned a Nelson's eye to this entire problem, has not released funds at all. And even if funds were given, they've given they were given about... Okay. The, the, how much we asked for was 38,000 crore 
how much has been given is 1000 crore so this is the kind of uh, treatment that the central government has meted out the prime minister has not come to visit the uh, locations in fact lakhs of people are still displaced even as we speak lakhs of people are still displaced they are not even able, uh, getting food to eat regularly right. they they have not even been given accommodation so far and uh, the situation is extremely precarious now with this continued rain, maybe if now if disease uh, sets in, then it's going to be a absolute calamitous situation. But the state government and the central government are uh, absolutely blazed about it, and uh, it yes. almost seems. Yes. Uh, we're going to be care. reconnecting with Vivek Reddy here on this to give out those specifics. A uh, very general answer that we got, uh, Vivek. If my voice is here going through, uh, please help us understand the specifics along the lines in which work has been done by the government. We're looking at, we're wanting to get in more details on on evacuation or relief work, on preparedness. Uh, at least for the lessons that were learned from the floods last month. Yes. Say, I think in each taluk and even in each hobli, there are several Ganji Kendras that have been opened by the government. These Ganji Kendras have been tackling, one, the, uh, they have been providing shelter to the people who have lost their houses. They have been providing food to them. All of them have been accommodated in clean and sanitable conditions. There have been bathrooms that have been built in these, in these Ganji Kendras. I have uh, visited these Kanji Kendras and I am stating so. And apart from that, their houses have been uh, uh, destroyed. The government is now, after having uh, uh, collected all the details and the reports pertaining to the losses of the houses, the government is now moving forward to rehabilitate them by okay. providing necessary financial assistance. So all these have, have taken place not only at the Taluk level or the Tasil level. These have taken place at the Hopli and village level. And that is the sort of penetration that the government has achieved in uh, this rehabilitation process. I think given the circumstances, given the challenges, mounting challenges, they have done a pretty good job and it's hats off to the officers okay. who have done this. Now, the ensuing rain that have now resulted, I think the government will have to take stock of the situation and what has to be done is the immediate interim measure of providing uh, sustenance to the needy who have been affected by the floods and rains. That the government will be focusing on henceforth. All right, uh, Vivek, stay on with us, please. Uh, let's also get in a word here from Mr. G.P. Sharma, who's the, the president of uh, the Metrology and Climate Change, uh, SkyMed Weather Services here. Uh, Mr. Sharma, thank you for being with us. Uh, help us understand uh, what should Karnataka be expecting in the coming few days here uh, and uh, how sudden have been these rains for, for, for the government to say that this is, this is unprecedented, of course, unprecedented percentage and recorded levels. But to what extent has it been so sudden that one didn't see the warning signs? Uh, yes, you see the northeast monsoon which has set in, uh, right, uh, I will say a little before time uh, over uh, the southern peninsula, which oh. includes part of uh, Karnataka also, and it has been very intense. Karnataka, you see the whole state, uh, all three parts, south interior Karnataka, north interior, coastal Karnataka, they all are in big surplus in the month of October. I will say almost already they got saturated, mm. and now next four or five days, uh, I'm afraid, it's going to be an extremely wet spell, and particularly the southern half of the state, entire coastline, Dakshin Kannada, Uttar Kannada, right through Udupi, it's going to be uh, very, very wet, extremely wet. And then the southern half, which will include this, particularly places like uh, Chikmaglu, Shimoga, uh, uh, Davangiri, Chitradur, Hassan, etc., they also are going to to have extremely heavy rains. The only good thing is, earlier the state had, had observed okay. floods over northern half, which is Bagalkot, Vijapura. They will have a little better scenario. They will not have a repeat of what we had last, but the southern half definitely uh, they need to watch out for extremely heavy spell. Yes. Yes, uh, Mr. Sharma, uh, uh, help us understand also the, the ramifications here of this because this is not in the state of Karnataka, uh, not just in the southern belt. We've, seen, belt. we've seen this in other areas, in other states, in Maharashtra and Bihar as well, uh, where they are either receiving the entire expected rainfall in a few hours or in one particular day, or it has come sooner than expected. Surely, it's uh, sooner than expected, and this is possibly the wettest October which we are going through for all these subdivisions, whether it's uh, Maharashtra or it's uh, Karnataka or it's uh, parts of Andhra Pradesh, right up to even Kerala. This is the last uh, 
seven years at least I didn't see uh, this type of a spell uh, happening over these parts and that too simultaneously. Okay, normally they take uh, little turns from one to the next to the next, but then simultaneously mm. there has been active yes. systems on either side of the coastline, be it Bay of Bengal, be it Arabian Sea, and that's all simultaneous activity. There has been extremely heavy rainfall okay. and it will go on even for Tamil Nadu also. Okay, so Kerala, Tamil Nadu, right. Karnataka. And and was Tamil this Nadu. was this being monitored? Could the government have been better prepared here for this? That this is going to be sooner than expected or in unprecedented levels? Please stay with us. We're getting in another expert here with us, Dr. Srinivas Reddy, who's the director of the Karnataka State uh, Natural Disaster Monitoring Center. Uh, Dr. Reddy, thank you for being with us here. Uh, we are wanting to understand uh, to to what extent does one not hold the government responsible because these are earlier than expected, these are unprecedented, but uh, was it not possible to determine this by daily monitoring, by proper forecast? Of course, whatever the forecast or the monitoring system is there, our, our agency is looking after only the state aspects, okay, for the Karnataka. Karnataka hmm. state, we are monitoring very systematically all the natural disasters and providing uh, scientific input for their management. But if it comes to the this year, whatever the right. uh, rainfall occurred in our state, of course, it is uh, uh, for the August uh, one week, uh, it has rained very heavily, which is the 118 years old right. history it has uh, uh, that uh, uh, last. But uh, not only just heavy rainfall in our state, whatever flood happened in our state is mainly because of the heavy releases from the Maharashtra dams. It was the Krishna. Hello? Hello? Yes, Mr. Reddy, please continue. Yeah, yeah. it is uh, not only because of the rainfall, it is heavy releases from the Maharashtra. See, uh, the, uh, especially if the interstates are there, it, uh, the upper catchment is lies in the other state. It is very difficult as to uh, monitor, monitor the inflows from the uh, right now, whatever the system is there, from the uh, other states. Uh, Maharashtra also, uh, they have kept a lot of water in their dams up to the uh, July end also. It was 90% of their reservoirs were full. Even August end also, about 95% of the dams were full. Uh, but uh, uh, suddenly they have released it from all the reservoirs at a time. That is the big uh, avac happened in okay. Karnataka. But Mr. Reddy, M Mr. Reddy, do you think, and in what you're explaining here, because each given state is suffering from the same menace of uh, unexpected rains or, or more than expected heavy rains, more than expected normal rains that have taken place in these past few months here, uh, it does mean that, that each given state would need to uh, revisit, restructure their plan on how to deal with floods. Definitely, and this definitely. being the defining year for that. Yeah, of course, we are we are doing that. Actually, uh, there is an institutional mechanism only in Karnataka to monitor this type of disasters. Uh, probably nowhere in the country it is like that. But still, there are many things, many gaps are there in our uh, administrative things. Uh, definitely, in the future, we are definitely will address all those gaps, whatever it is there in the, uh, in especially in the management side. Uh, Dr. Reddy, appreciate you uh, with those uh, uh, expert advice, but stay on with us uh, while we get in more voices. Uh, Mr. N. Chandra Menon, who is the founder member of the National Disaster Management Authority here, appreciate you being with us. Uh, uh, in your view, the Achha, we're going to be reconnecting uh, with him on that in just a bit. But let's go across to our correspondent, uh, Neha, uh, with this here. Uh, Neha, uh, we, we've largely heard in, in, in this brief show here that it, it is at the end of the day dealing with the crisis of changing weather, uh, changing the season altogether, uh, in, in, ex in, in ex essentially knowing when to be expecting these heavy rains. If our forecast and monitoring systems have been in place, uh, the state government should have undoubtedly then been better prepared. Even if this is unprecedented, there were enough warning signs given out.
Well, absolutely fair. You know, that is right. That was an admission of a lapse right there by, in fact, uh, the Disaster uh, Monitoring Authority, you know, of Karnataka. It's clearly gone on to say that some administration lapses have to be adhered to going forward. So this is nothing but clear, uh, you know, uh, negligence by the government of Karnataka. We're talking about them sleeping over issues like these. We've seen it in the past there and we're seeing it again. There is no change. It is most unfortunate that, you know, people have lost their lives in the past. Kanatka witnessed one of the worst floods this time around. As many as about 100 people that lost their lives. But despite that, these flash floods could, you know, turn out to be even more devastating. We've even heard departments, uh, you know, of course, the concerned departments, the Met Department, disaster monitoring authorities also telling us that rains are only forecasted even higher going forward in this week. So what is the government of Kanatka really doing mm -hmm. at this point in time? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, rehabilitation is one thing but on hand right now of course the focus should be to try yes. and ensure that no more people lose their lives and uh, something should be done on ground that's right so, so there is enough information in the form of a forecast and warning signs that is available for the government to have acted in here mr chandra menon uh, founder member of the national disaster management authority thank you for being with us uh, in what we are witnessing in karnataka this time uh, this year, uh, in barely a month later, uh, to be suffering from flash floods. Uh, in your view, to, to what extent would you say that the government would have been better prepared for this? See, actually, I think uh, the um, government institutions and agencies uh, at the state level and the district level needs to recognize the fact that, uh, you know, uh, unprecedented rainfalls and, uh, you know, e extreme uh, cold wave and heat wave are all becoming, uh, you know, the new normal. Mm. And so we need to we need to recognize that uh, right. the floods which happened in Bihar, the, in Patna, and the floods which happened in Kerala last year in August 2018, and the floods which recurred again this year. Uh, in Karnataka, actually, Belgavi, the last three months, we have been seeing... Uh, devastation, loss of lives, loss of uh, crops, uh, loss, loss of houses, and the people have actually suffered enormous damage. Uh, so this, I think, is something right. which we need to recognize and, uh, you know, better preparedness in terms of forecasts and things like that. The IMD has been providing forecasts about impending, uh, you know, uh, harsh weather. Uh, but uh, we need to recognize that uh, the mm -hmm. damage which is getting caused by the floods, uh, unprecedented rainfall, uh, is all part of, uh, uh, you know, uh, climate change-induced hydrometeorological disasters which are happening. And, uh, you know, this right. is happening... But, but uh, being, being from the NDMA here, sir, Mr. Menon, uh, do, do you feel that governments of the day are, are ready or aware that uh, this, this, is, this is a plan uh, of handling disaster that needs to be rechalked out. Uh, there's nothing of the past which is going to work today because this year has been the defining year in uh, in helping each of us understand living in any given state of the country that what we've witnessed this year has been an absolute change, has been a change in timing, change in intensity, and this needs to be redrafted. Uh, as a founder member of the NDMA, do you think state governments in charge today would be willing to look into that? All state disaster management authorities need to recognize that, uh, you know, the change, changes which are happening would need to basically uh, force and compel people to uh, not only just work with uh, government agencies, but also work with uh, panchayati raj institutions at the local level and also involve the communities. Mm -hmm. The community preparedness is extremely important, you know, because ultimately the first responders are the communities themselves before, you know, the NDRF or the, the you know, the Indian Armed Forces or any other agencies can really come in to help the people. In fact, we saw that in, in Maharashtra, we saw that uh, an entire right. train was actually flooded because the tracks got flooded and then, you know, people had to be evacuated with helicopters. And in Kerala, we saw that helicopters were winching up people That's right. when the Kerala floods happened. So, you know, we need to understand that, uh, you know, we cannot continue to address today's problems with yesterday's solutions. Okay, we need, we need to come up with, uh, you know, understanding... Mr. Menon, appreciate, appreciate you speaking with us and, and, and putting it across so eloquently here and an absolute encapsulation of the problem that we've seen this year uh, across the states and floods. Today, we're talking about Karnataka floods. That this has been a year where in which we'll have to acknowledge that rains have hit states uh, before time or delayed 
not according to what was being predicted earlier and far more intense to what was being recorded earlier. It is time. This is the big takeaway from our discussion today. Looking at all the states receiving this nature of freak rainfall, that the forecast is available, the warning signs are there. It is for our respective authorities and the state governments to work, wake up and think that what has worked in the past as disaster or flood relief management is not going to be working now in henceforth. It needs to be rechocked, drafted, revisited. Thank you for being with us.